Okay, imagine you've been out shooting. It's been a long day and you come home, you're happy, you look at the material on your monitor, but then you realize that the video and maybe the sound wasn't as good as you thought. Maybe even horrible. Well, you're not alone in this situation, but luckily there are ways to fix both your video and sound in post. Let's have a look at it in this video. As editing softwares continue to evolve, it's easier and easier to access good tools to manipulate and fix your footage in post. This do however only work to a certain extent, as you lose quality the more you adjust your footage. Having as good material as possible from set is no doubt the best. In our previous video we showed this by using the teal and orange effect on set, rather than grading it in post. I will add a link to that video in the end of this video. But that's not what this video is about. How do we save bad footage in post? Well, it's hard to tell without seeing any video. So we need some bad footage. But where do we get it? It's not that hard, Anders. You just need somebody who doesn't know how to use a camera. Yeah. Like this guy. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Isn't that a bit rude, Thomas? No, no. A bit, but it's okay. Okay, and you never filmed before? <laughs> no. You don't have a camera? No. And you want to be part of the video? No. Yes, I mean yes. Yeah. Great. I found this awesome location just outside this office. And it's a guitar store. And you are gonna use, Simon, a GH4 with a Rode Video Mac Pro. Your task is to make a little video about that store, okay? Anders, you are going to edit this material in one hour as best as you can. Okay. And to make this video a little more entertaining and educational, I think you, Anders, should give Simon some advice on how to shoot as a beginner. While Anders is figuring out his advice, let's take a look at the questions. Okay, so we want questions where the person can answer with a full sentence. Like, can you tell me a little bit about your task here at the store? And what do you sell? We don't just want yes and no answers. Like, are you selling guitars? Yes. Is the store going well? No. Okay, so uh, here's the store. Uh, I'm going to give some advice in just two minutes. Just a minute. Two minutes, okay. Set. Okay, first when you come in, talk with the employees or the guy you want to film. Uh, get to know him a little bit before you start filming, so he feel confident and relaxed. That's yeah. really important. So just um, make him show you around the store first and uh, make him talk about things he know because then you feel confident and relaxed. And then, you, um, and then also you can then see around the store where it's good light uh, because light is important and also places where it's a little bit uh, more quiet because yeah. in the entrance there's a lot of uh, noise from the streets, uh, yeah. etc. when you take the interview. So first, after that, you have the interview. That's the thing you do the first, after the, the location scouting or looking around. Um, remember to stand quite close, like just maximum one meter away, because yeah. the microphone uh, needs to get close to get good sound. Um, have the camera at eye level, so it's not too low, not too high, but in the, in the same mm. as his uh, uh, face. Make him uh, stand a little bit away from the background, so you get a little bit of depth. depth. Yeah not too close to the wall and uh, make sure there's some light hitting his face so yeah. because we want to see him clearly uh, after that you should uh, when you talk with him just nod your head like show that you're interested but don't say anything because that will interrupt the yeah. sound and then you shoot the b-roll uh, because you don't know what he's going to say that's why you do the interview first yeah. because then you can shoot, shoot some footage afterwards that uh, reflects what he's saying yes. okay so when you shoot the b-roll try to shoot things that you think is, uh, looks good and fits what he talked about and should start with a wide angle uh, like a really big uh, off the store uh, yeah. so we have that and then go closer and often the closer you get uh, with the camera the better the more good looking the image is um, uh, remember to press rec and <laughs> um, try some movements with the camera like slowly like this when you record uh, that can create some interesting shots and yeah, vary the framing vary the shots and have fun. I think that's important. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Anders. And remember, we want some bad footage, so we can't make him pro already. Trafiken. Hui. Är det ett bra lys? Vi får se. Ett ja. Det är bara stilla i allt fall. Det är det. Det är lite svårt. How did it go? Uh, I think it went well. Hope so. I think the 
to get the smooth shots and uh, have a stable camera all the time was the most difficult thing. Now I'm uh, really curious to see how uh, the video ends up. Okay, we transferred the material, now it's time to edit. To make this a little bit more interesting and fun, I invited one of the fastest editors in Norway for a one hour intense uh, editing session. Uh, we can only use Premiere Pro, and we can find music and sounds on Epidemic Sound. Other than that, no other software uh, are allowed. And yeah, this is going to be interesting. Are you ready? Okay, you guys seem to be ready. Three, two, one, go! First, I imported all the material and dragged it down to sequence. I started cutting down the B-roll. Shake might be hard to see on the small SD screen on the camera, so that's why you can be quite surprised when you look at the footage on the bigger screen. Almost everything was shaky, but I knew I could save some of them with post-stabilization. So, I cut away all the worst parts and saved the OK shots for later. Now I wanted to gather all the cuts I've done. A way to do this fast is to add an adjustment layer above the cuts. Drag all the cuts up to the adjustment layer and then down again to make the cuts in the adjustment layer. Then you pull down the adjustment layer to fit exactly in between the clips. Right click and press ripple delete. Okay, it was time to build a story around the interview. The shot itself wasn't too pleasing. But as the sound was quite good, I knew that this was going to work. I think that what we Halfway there. Always. That is helt crazy. I have not done anything. I have just built up a story. I have not done any warp stabilizer or anything. I have not done anything. Warp stabilizer, come here. Ah, warp stabilization takes some time, especially on slow computers. And since I had to stabilize, so to say, all the B-roll, it took a lot of time. Okay, finding the right music for a film can take hours. It's so important as the music will affect the audience a lot. I knew the music could enhance our story and thereby make the B-roll more acceptable. Since this was a guitar store targeting both young and old people, I had to find some music that could fit all ages. 10 seconds left, guys. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, I just managed to make it into a story and only warp stabilize and a little bit sound adjustments, but no color grading and no graphics. Ugh. Okay, we will show you guys the video, but first Let's look at the most common problems that you might be able to fix in post. Shaky footage. This is a very common problem. To avoid this on set, you can use gear such as gimbals, steadicam, shoulder rigs and tripods. But if you want to shoot handle as Simon did, remember to use a camera with image stabilization in the lens or in the camera. The quickest way to fix stabilization in Premiere Pro is to use warp stabilizer. Cut down the clip before or after a very rough movement in the shot. Then apply the warp stabilizer and wait for it to process. If the shot is quite clean, without too many moving objects in the foreground, the effect does a decent job. We asked our patrons to send off some of their bad footage, and here is one of them. This shot is quite tricky, as we have a lot of movement by the camera and the two characters. With the default settings in warp stabilizer and shots like this, it tends to make the shot quite wobbly 
and as you can see, it zooms in a lot to be able to stabilize. This makes the shot more pixelated and blurry, so I do recommend adjusting down the smoothness of the effect. Then you also decrease the wobbly effect. Hmm, I still think the shot is a bit too shaky. Try to choose a different part of the shot instead. This part was easier to stabilize. Ok, this shot looks too hard to save in post, but let's try. We're going to use something called Advanced Stabilization within Warp Stabilizer. Ok, so this is just with the default settings. If this shot was meant for a dramatic chase scene, we could have turned down the smoothness and it could work. But if you want it even smoother, go to Advanced and press Detailed Analysis. This takes a lot of time to render, but might fix the wobbly effect created by the rolling shutter in the camera. Ah, it looks better. But again, this shot was extreme. Ok, in this shot the warp stabilizer makes the beginning of the shot smooth, as it is clean, but when Thomas moves, the wobbly effect is back. Here it's actually better to turn off the stabilization before he moves. To do this, cut just before the movement. Move the first part up and make it a bit longer, over the other shot. Pull down the opacity. Now we want to try to make a smooth transition between the stable part of the shot and the one without the effect. As you can see, the warp stabilizer zooms in 103.9%. Therefore, I'll zoom in with the same amount on the second shot and then position it so it fits the end of the first frame in the other shot. Then I cut the first part back to where the second part starts and reset the opacity to 100%. Ok, I have one last trick for you, which doesn't require the warp stabilization effect. Choose a frame that looks good and is sharp. Make that frame as the beginning of the clip. Right click and press add frame hold. When playing back, you will tell that this is a freeze frame. So let's try to make it look like video. You can either add camera shake presets like Yale's Deadpool preset, which is free online. But if you want it to be static, you can add some noise to make it a bit more like video. I then suggest unclicking Color Noise. Sound, a very important aspect of filmmaking, which can create a lot of frustration in post if captured badly on set. Ok, start by adjusting up the volume. I recommend right clicking the sound and press Audio Gain. By setting the normalize max peak to zero, you can automatically gain up the volume without distorting the sound. As you can hear, we got some background noise. Premiere Pro has a built-in denoiser, which you can try first. Our mystical editor used this effect to remove the background noise. You should however be careful adding too much of the denoiser, as the sound gets quite robotic. Try adjusting it until you are happy. In this shot, the denoiser didn't remove the drill in the background. And one of the reasons for that is that the drill has almost the same sound frequencies as the talent's voice. Another trick is to use an EQ. This is a great tool you find in about every editing and sound softwares. Try to find the frequency of the noise and drag it down. Again, if the noise is in the same frequency as the talent's voice, it can be very hard to fix. So you just gotta try. This is another shot, where you both got music playing in the background and a rumble from the wind. The rumble from the wind has a low frequency, so by using the de-rumbler we can remove it without affecting the talent's voice. <laughs> Since the music is almost in the same frequencies as their voices, it will be hard to remove it completely. So if the sound of the voice is quite poor, it helps a lot to add subtitles. You can also add some background music to hide that you have been using the denoiser. Just remember to use the EQ to lower the frequencies of the music that is in the same level as her voice. 
Then you will avoid that her voice drowns in music. Bad light and colors. Shooting in wrong white balance is a common problem. Again, we have a shot made by one of our patrons. Okay, let's first stabilize it as we did earlier with the warp stabilizer. This time I'm also going to choose static shot to make it look it was shot from a tripod. Now let's do some color correction. Go into Lumetri Color and choose the white balance selector. Click on something that should be white in the frame. Then the colors adjust itself automatically to make what is white, white. This is another typical white balance issue. We have two rooms and they have two different color temperatures. If we try to adjust the white balance with a white balance selector, one of the rooms will always get wrong colors. So we want to use something called HSL secondary in Lumetri Color. Use the color selector and click the yellow greenish light we want to make whiter. Adjust the selection and make the selection a bit blurry. Now drag the color to the opposite direction of yellow. We are now only adjusting the color of the yellow greenish light, which didn't look good. Okay, overexposed shots. If you are lucky, you can use Lumetri Color to fix this. Drag down highlights or use curves. Professional cameras can record in codecs that allows you to adjust the brightness a lot in posts, such as the raw files you get from RED cameras. Mobile phone cameras have more compressed video, so then it's harder to do color correction in posts. The same is with underexposed shots. It's harder to fix that in post with a poor codec. Unfortunately, in Premiere, you don't have any tools to remove grain and noise, which you get when brightening up the image. One of the softwares I know to remove grain and noise is Neat Video. You should check it out. If the shot was so overexposed or underexposed that you couldn't save it with Lumetri Colors, try to think a bit creative. Could this be a solution? I think it's about where you want the audience to focus, what is important to present to the audience. And this is a good question to start our next topic, unfocused shots. This is also a very common problem which is hard to fix. But let's see what we can do in Premiere Pro. First, we would of course like to sharpen the image. You can first use the sharpening tool under the creative tab in Lumetri Color. If you need even more sharpening, you can find a sharpen effect in the effects tab. Remember that you now sharpen the whole image. We would love to just sharpen our talent. One way to simulate shallow depth of field is to create an adjustment layer over our shots. Then add blur to it and mask around our talent. Press inverted and find adjust the mask. You would need to pull down the effect a bit and move the mask with the talent. So it is time consuming to make it perfect. You can also try to do the same effect in a less time consuming way without masking perfectly around the characters. Just make a simple mask with some feathering and place it where you could feel natural to blur the shot. Again, it's all about choosing where you want the audience to focus. What are you presenting to tell your story? Have that in mind whenever you are editing something. Okay, flickering. Today, there are still no tools in Premiere that will fix this for you. But we have a quite simple trick we can try. Duplicate the shot and place it one layer up and one frame to the right. Then set the opacity of the top layer to 50%. Duplicate the shot again and place it again on top and one frame to the right. Now drag down the opacity to 25%. The flickering is starting to disappear. Since the intensity and speed of the flicker can vary from shot to shot, we need to find adjust the effect. You can either adjust the opacity or continue duplicating the shot. But keep in mind that doing this will create a ghosting effect on moving objects. So let's use a mask to fix this. Nest all the layers above layer 1. Create a mask in the area we see the flickering and move the mask as the camera moves, using Mask Path. The more layers, the more ghosting effect you get. That's why it can be very hard to fix shots with a lot of movement. You can try to mask around the moving objects, but it's time consuming. In this situation, you might ask yourself, do I need to have the shot in slow motion? If not, speed it up to original speed to hide the flickering. When shooting in slow motion indoors, I do recommend that you do a test recording and play it back in slow motion on your camera. 
If you then see flicker, adjust the shutter speed and do a new test shot. Also, using specific bulbs and lamps will help you a lot. You can learn more about this in one of our previous light videos. I will link to it in the end of the video. Now, the video you've all been waiting for. Simon's Guitar Store video. Keep in mind that this was shot in just one hour, by a beginner. And it was edited in just one hour as well. Okay, <laughs> here he comes. som jo kanskje er litt unikt her med vintage gitar, er at vi er en av de få frittstående faghandlene som er igjen i en voksende jungel av kjedebutikker, og vi har valgt å bygge den butikken vi har lyst til å gå inn i selv. Vi har en ganske kul særstilling i forhold til det, hvor vi da har varer som ingen andre har. Jeg håper at folk Først og fremst kommer hit for at de liker butikken, og at de synes at det vi driver med er stas. Og at man føler at man her kanskje får en litt mer personlig oppfølging, at man kan ha muligheten til å komme og få en litt bredere hjelp enn det man kanskje kan i kassa på superen. Jeg er veldig stolt av arbeidsplassen min. Jeg er veldig glad i kollegaene mine og kunden. Yay! If you have been following us for a while, you have probably noticed that we try to upload once a month. But we don't have a specific date. So to get notified about our next filmmaking videos, you can press the subscribe button and the bell button to get notified about this. In the next video, we'll talk about film music. Oh, I, I can't see either. I invited a Japanese pianist to improvise piano to some very different shots. And then I made Thomas Leipold do the same. How they interpreted the clips and expressed themselves through the music was very fascinating. And tomorrow we will upload the next Filmmakers World Cup episode and the very last challenge for you guys. So don't forget to check that out. Become a Patreon to get access to exclusive stuff and pre-screenings and support our channel by pressing the thumbnail appearing now. And here is the teal and orange lighting video I talked about. And here is the video about the bulbs to avoid flickering. To see the film from the mystical editor, I'll link to it in the description. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Hold up!